even 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 if a lot of the systems that we create are just like simple like buttons and cues and like figuring out how to optimize uh, the right kind of ad for like the right kind of person, ultimately we're trying to shape people's behaviors. We're trying to figure out what is going to make somebody do the thing that we want them to do. Because of that, we're affecting our fellow humans in such a way that we're trying to figure out how to determine their path in this free will, amazing chaos that is reality. And uh, that carries a really big sense of responsibility. Like we need to figure out how to create a code of ethics of sorts that's going to help us frame our reality towards the best possible outcome. And that's really, really hard to think about because there's so many potential outcomes and there's so much resource that's being spent towards destruction as opposed to creation. So if like like they're working on, like for example, this beautiful hummingbird is about this big that's able to fly around uh, totally organic looking in a way and it's able to record video, right? And and this, this system, and DARPA is really all about like creating innovative technology and figuring out where that's going to lead to. But somehow making this more accessible could could lead to some really great content, just like, you know, people recording their humanity in, in a very interesting perspective of this like virtual hummingbird, you know, and I feel like that there's a lot of potential there. Um, expensive kind of way, I think that that could really change a lot of the way that we, uh, you know, help with um, catastrophic situations, having a, um, you know, this kind of automated drone system that can help deploy medicine as opposed to compelling. I mean, the fact that he's dedicated so much of his work in, into this idea of like sort of data liberation where like not only are you allowing people to share some of the secretive content that's within certain realms but also the idea that ultimately there's a lot of editors out there but that anybody could be an editor of that content um, just really democratizes information in, in, in a very compelling way which is you know, like, like I think like a model like Wikipedia where people can collaboratively share in, in a much more transparent way, I think it's compelling um, and, and much more useful than the sort of secretive way in which uh, you, you can pull off hoaxes with this kind of uh, physical hacking of, uh, of network data. Totally. So, like, we're all hackers. Like, in a, in a certain sense, like the maker movement and, like, the... I mean, even like going back to like blacksmiths, like how the heck do you make metal into a knife, you know, or into like a sword or, you know, it depends on what the tool is going to ultimately be used for. But in order to shape base material into a possible tool that can lead to solutions, you have to hack at it. You have to like fucking keep going at it. Can I, maybe it could be. And then eventually you provide something that can solve a problem. And I feel like that iterative kind of relentless like dedication is a big part of the hacker culture. Now as hacker culture, now as far as um, the so, sort of cultural data liberation movement, I think that ultimately the data is sort of representative of the people and it should be owned by the people. So a lot of the systems that are currently... Um, for the most part, in control of the means to gather that data and the data itself are not in the interests ultimately of the people. So things like Code for America and, you know, Data Kind, like they're just doing such great work to, uh, to liberate that information and, and empower us and the general population to do something with this information. So it's not something that's just controlled and analyzed and you know, curated and, you know, primed and everything else that you can think of that is potential with large data sets to giant corporations, but to people, people that are curious about, like, why is it that my freaking pothole has not been fixed in the past eight months, you know, and then you're able to see that and you understand why you're in that circumstance. And that's, that's just, that's the future right there. We need to use more of those systems to figure out how to solve our problems versus create more problems for other civilizations or, you know,
just other humans ultimately because we're in one world and the internet has showed us that so we really need to figure out how to empower each other to make that even be more true